Today, we're going to meet Enrico Vita, CEO of Amplifon. Enrico, thank you for visiting Bocconi University. Thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here. So let me start with a broad question uh, on uh, the sector of hearing aid, uh, a sector which plays at the intersection between uh, uh, life science and technology. Uh, in your observatory, as a leading global player, what do you see the core trends in the years to come? Sure. Well, we see some uh, clear trends at the global level. The first one, and most probably the most important one, is related to the aging of the world population. Uh, just think that today, uh, seniors, so people 65 plus, represent about 9% of the world population, and this percentage is expected to increase to 12% just by 2030, which is less than 10 years from now. And the new generation of seniors is uh, very different from the typical stereotypes of the third age. They are much more dynamic. They are also very curious versus the new technologies, digital technologies. They connect to the internet and uh, they have at least one social account. The second trend that we see, and this is more specific to our sector, is uh, unfortunately an increase uh, in the hearing loss uh, uh, prevalence uh, in the world population. Just think that today, one out of five people in the world suffer from some degree of hearing loss, and this ratio is expected to increase to one in four by 2015. And this because the hearing loss risk factors are not being offset by increasing prevention. That's why in our sustainability plan, we focus a lot and we set very clear targets in order to raise awareness about prevention, hearing loss, etc., etc. Then, uh, from a technological standpoint, uh, um, what we see is that uh, hearing gates have become uh, uh, connectable devices, which means uh, devices able to collect uh, an enormous amount of data and information about our customers, which open the door for us uh, to a huge opportunity in order to innovate in the customer experience and services that uh, we deliver to our customers. That's very fascinating. So in order to tackle these challenges, uh, Amplifon went through an impressive turnaround in the last five years. Can you share uh, with us how you transformed the organization? Sure. Well, since the beginnings, my absolute priority was uh, to set the direction for the group and to set also the priorities uh, for, for the group. So we defined a very simple and very focused uh, strategic framework which is composed by just three very simple pillars. The first pillar is about our model of growth, which is made of organic growth, which is the main KPI for us to judge how well we are performing in the market, and also acquisitions. Acquisitions played a very important role in our growth story. And in fact, in the last five years, we have invested more than 1.5 billion for acquisitions. And at uh, the center of our strategy, there is, uh, as, uh, as always, our customers. So our commitment to deliver the best customer proposition uh, to our customers, a proposition where digital technologies play an important role in order to improve the experience and the protocols inside our stores, but also outside the stores from the first contact to the after sales. And then the third pillar, which is about our people and organization, that uh, it's our most valuable asset. Uh, it's the asset that made uh, the real difference in the last few years, and uh, I'm very confident that we'll continue to, to do so also in the future. I feel very fortunate to lead a group of people that uh, I see it is, a very, it is very talented. So growth, customer, and people. And speaking about human capital in general, uh, uh, Amplifon recently uh, launched the uh, Bocconi Chair in customer science, which is very important to attract students and also to uh, fund research uh, uh, on our talented professors. Since you spoke about talents, what do you expect from the chair? Yeah, well, let, let me uh, s say first uh, that our decision uh, to strengthen the relationship uh, with Bocconi in the form of a strategic partnership with the institution of the Amplifon Chair is uh, deriving from the fact that I believe that uh, we share many important uh, values between us. We also share commitment to innovation and to talent. Uh, then, uh, with regards to the chair, I believe that this chair builds um, a sort of a bridge between the latest uh, 
uh, advancements in artificial intelligence uh, and marketing practice, which I believe uh, is the future of marketing. And in fact, uh, with this chair, we want uh, to support and uh, give a contribution uh, to the advancement in knowledge uh, in, in marketing. And we are also very happy that uh, this chair has been assigned uh, to a very young and talented uh, professor like Professor Gaia Rubera. Thank you very much. Um, we are sure to deliver and we hope that you'll be satisfied. So let me conclude with the uh, policy question, Enrico. What Italian SMEs can learn from Amplifon's story? Or to put it differently, we are living a super moment for Italy in these days. How can we transform more Italian SMEs into established global players like uh, Amplifon? Sure. Well, if you look at the most successful companies around the world, I think that they all have one very specific characteristic in common, which is their ambition. Their ambition for growth and their ambition to be the leader in their, in their sector. Uh, to be the leader in uh, your specific sector, uh, in my opinion, is vitally important uh, in order to have the capacity to invest more for the long term uh, and to invest more than your competitors. Also, it allows you to make experiments uh, and maybe also mistakes without any relevant consequence uh, for, uh, for the company. Then, uh, uh, what uh, I also observe is the fact, uh, and uh, what I believe is the fact uh, that uh, I strongly think that uh, companies that will be more able uh, to exploit digital technologies uh, will be the ones that uh, more likely will win in their respective sector. Uh, so uh, as, as Amplifon, uh, we are investing every, every year more than 100 million in digital technologies, in data, software, etc. And I think that this will represent a competitive advantage for us for the future. These are important tips for any SMEs in Italy. So, Enrico, thank you very much for visiting Bocconi University, and I look forward to having you back uh, with our students in our campus. Thank you to you. It has been a pleasure.